I am Roberto Tejada. I am a poet, I'm an art historian, and I'm a teacher, and I'm a professor here at the University of Houston. So this is where I would teach in one of the large lecture classes, like the introduction to creative writing. I like to bring in videos, recordings of poets who are reading their own work to get a sense of, of their poetry in performance. Poetry is, is the way of experiencing the world outside of the everyday commercial expectations that are made upon us. It's um, space outside of space, um, often aligned with the sacred. This is just a, a makeshift library. I've moved around so much in my 57 years, and I uh, try to keep things as tidy as possible, but that becomes uh, a very challenging task. So when I begin to write a poem, it's usually that I have been drawn by some circumstance, either by suggestion of some phrase or word, to return to my notes or my notebooks. I've been keeping a kind of day book for the last 20 years. This one begins in July of 1995, and sometimes there are transcriptions of dreams, sometimes there are notes taken from things that I'm reading. This is also, um, where the book Carbonate of Copper began. So for example, in the poem Carbonate of Copper, I wanted to figure out in what kind of world would I need to build in which I could make Carbonate of Copper somehow stand for the idea of living in a, a kind of ether and the ether of the present to me is so tied with the social media and what we call predictive algorithms and how to build a world around that. Carbonate of Copper. In the hours I was left to the elements, sorely colorless labor, evolving facts of a day, days now deficient in matters of fact, so many attachments of the tribe to this stupefying circle, it burns a new image of the earth, disabling the view from nowhere. Am I unsheltered and so out of time as to wonder, does my face defy its aim on end? Am I the architect of this very small thing I derive or refuse from the seven descendants? Does a landscape here obtain as when there was food, the field, abundant sun, summer green, river, valley, chestnut, little bomb, border, milestone, came the builders of a sudden, identical twins at the sugar mill. It has a window overlooking the carbonate of copper on shapes predictive in the wireless ether. So in a, a sense, there's a, there's a kind of storyline to the poem. It begins with a voice of a person wondering, where, where am I? And then the speaker or the persona of the poet begins to ask these questions because it's a kind of uh, poem about what is my place in the world? What is the place of being unsheltered in space as we often find ourselves in society, not finding a place of, of respite, but rather what are the minimal requirements to be in a space that might provide some kind of security and therefore the river valley, chestnut, little bomb, border, milestone, then sugar mill. And of course, the sugar mill is a reference to the kinds of colonial um, places where indentured servants worked and that our everyday reality is not unlike uh, the kind of labor that's extracted from us in a sugar mill, the kind of labor that's extracted from us, even just as we're kind of navigating the digital realm and that the wireless ether is that place in which we're being surveyed and being kind of watched and being um, used. So this is, the way, this is the way that poems work, that they, in this case, can use the most suggestive 
language to point to the kind of oppressive, concrete, everyday world that we inhabit. Poetry seems to be the place in which one can both travel, um, experiment, and I want, I want everyone to be able to inhabit that identity of a poet. Sometimes we can do it by just reading poetry. Jorge Luis Borges said that when he reads Shakespeare, he is Shakespeare. I believe that. When we read someone's work, we become that person. We're able to inhabit uh, and empathize and hopefully um, interact from the standpoint of someone else.